it's difficult to imagine that he will not be around anymore. Remembering the objective events helps to go on. I would like to recall quickly, since this will be commented upon many times, but I'm not sure, well, we'll see, how Pierre Binetrui chose his scientific path, which he believed was the best, with so much energy and knowledge. He arrived at Orsay, Laboratory of Particle Physics Theory, LPT, <coughs> hired as a professor at University Paris 11, Paris 11th, in 1990. He was 35 years old, brilliant researcher in beyond standard model high energy physics. In 1997, he created a research group which he developed until 2004. Then decided to evolve towards cosmology and gravitation theory with Luc Valentin since 1999. He had been interested in this domain. He asked for a special room dedicated to cosmology seminars in the lab. You remember? <laughs> the seminars organized there were numerous and attracted a lot of people. In 2003, he became professor at Paris Diderot University and encouraged by Valentin and certainly not by Orsay people, uh, he founded the APC laboratory. And we were very, very uh, sad and confused, but that was what he chose. The APC lab, Astroparticle and Cosmology. He formed a great number of students. He had many collaborators. Many of them are here and already spoke about him and remember. Using this rapid history helps me to remember that I had interacted with Pierre before he decided to move to Paris Diderot through many discussions which often took place in his car, with which he was daily going back to Paris, offering very friendly to host me. I keep the memory of a rare person, not only a great physicist, but also someone who, when he was discussing with people, was strongly present. That's all. <laughs> So it's a very short, uh, but uh, this is a summary of uh, uh, what I think when I think of him and uh, of what I feel uh, very sadly when I am conscious of that he disappeared. That's it. So the next message is by... Uh Jean Trantan Van, who is, uh, cannot be with us because he left for Vietnam. So it was a message which he sent to Stavros a couple of days ago, uh, Trantan Van, Van, which is, Cher Stavros, merci de m'avoir invité à la conférence pour honorer la mémoire de Pierre Binetrui. Malheureusement, je serai au Vietnam à cette période et je t'ai pris de m'excuser pour mon absence. Pierre est un de mes amis les plus chers depuis les années 70. I believe here, a parenthesis, that there should be a timing problem. In the 70, Pierre was 15. <laughs> <laughs> Nous avons été pendant de nombreuses uh, années au même laboratoire et collaborant ensemble pour les rencontres de Morion et les rencontres de Blois. 
Pierre a apporté des grandes contributions à l'organisation scientifique des rencontres de Morion dans le début des années 1970. I think it's the same problem, and I believe he meant uh, beginning of the 90s. Beginning of the 90s, I believe he started to collaborate in La Grande Morion and Blois. Récemment, en juin 2016, il a accepté de faire la synthèse des contributions aux rencontres de Blois. Sa disparition est, un grand, est une grande perte pour la communauté scientifique de Morion et de Blois. Bien amicalement, Van. Just as a parenthesis, you remember, so, Pierre indeed... Uh, I think uh, was in this committee's rencontre de Morion en Blois, and also in some committee for the Vietnam conferences, and uh, uh, that uh, Tran was organizing a particular uh, rencontre de Vietnam. And as you saw, he was also in the inauguration conference to the uh, Quinion Center that uh, uh, Tran was uh, build, did build recently. Okay, thank you. I met Pierre first in the, in the late 80s uh, in Nancy, and then a bit later in, uh, in uh, Orsay in several occasions. But it's mainly in the period 1995 to 2000 that we were more uh, frequently involved in activities and interacted uh, quite a lot. Th those were the, 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 the years during which we were both sitting in the uh, Commission 02, as we, uh, we, we call it. So for those who don't know very well this uh, French system, it means the National Committee, which is in charge of hiring and promoting researchers, CNRS researchers, and reviewing the activity of French labs. In, the, in, those, in those days, that was also one of the mission of, of this committee. So this meant a lot of, of work. We had five years of activities, uh, three weeks of of meeting every every year, so we had indeed plenty of uh, occasions to meet and to discuss and to interact and to collaborate on these things. Pierre was a very active, I, I should even say a proactive member of the committee, anticipating the problems and always very very active in a, in his um, in his judgments and uh, and. Um, uh, uh, well, yeah, in uh, judgments and uh, evaluation of, of people and, and, uh, and labs. And um, so uh, typically on a meeting day in the morning, Pierre would arrive 10 minutes late, wouldn't pay the slight uh, attention to the irritated look of the chairman, and proceed immediately to unpack big, two big, uh, big stacks of papers from his bag, two big stacks. One would be the CNRS, CNRS um, files. In those days, we didn't have electronic files, so everything was on paper. And the, the other stack would be students' papers to be marked. And he would then proceed to switch from one activity to the, to the, to the next with much uh, skill, showing that he had a long experience of this kind of activity in such meetings. And indeed, Pierre was an experience had a lot of expense for such meetings, and in several occasions, I asked him to go and defend the interests of our theory um, community when there were other meetings where some sort of arbitration between subfields of physics were taking place. And Pierre was extremely good at that. He, he had experience, as I said, in negotiating, in defending cases, or sometimes in attacking the others. And so he was quite good at this thing. So it was, a, it was a real pleasure to work with him, to collaborate with him. Of course, as always in the, such circumstances, in such committees, there were also times of tension. There were sometimes disagreement. There was even tension or even clashes. But Pierre was very good at restoring um, goodwill and good spirit and common sense and good spirit in the committee. Um, I have a memory of a little uh, event that took place after a long day of such tension, of such, uh, tense discussions, so everybody was uh, on the nerves. And suddenly, Pierre had a little slip of the tongue, and we started to, to, to laugh, one after the other. And finally, all the committee had a big uh, uh, fit of jiggles and couldn't end, 
that was that was quite effective, in fact, to release the tension. But in the same years, in the same years where we were, he was so active in that committee, I could witness him um, more and more busy with some strange activities. At the, the beginning, I didn't quite understand what was involved. He was meeting all kinds of people. He had meetings with officials. He had meetings with colleagues. He had meetings, he had meeted with new communities that he no, didn't know so well, astrophysicists in particular. And gradually, it became clear to me that he was working on a big project that was, he was in fact pushing his project of the APC. And um, that he had such a clear vision that that was to be, that was the thing to be done at the time, um, I find quite remarkable. And also that he managed to do all these things together, all these activities, the teaching, the research, the management of this GDR that we heard about by Pierre Fayet, the, uh, these committees, uh, and all the travels, the organization of, of conferences, all these things, I don't know how he managed. And I must admit that this is still a, a matter of awe and of admiration for me and also of envy, because I'm totally unable to do such things. Our last meeting, I remember very well, well, um, I think it, that, that was the last meeting, took place on February 2, 2016. He was invited to, give, to deliver a colloquium on our campus, and the subject was detection of gravitational wave and his pet project, ELISA. The, the talk was brilliant, but you should realize February 2 means 10 days before the official release that gravitational waves had been detected. <coughs> so, of course, uh, there had been rumors, so we tried to press him to ask, uh, asking questions about. He carefully, politely, but smilingly, but eluded the question, didn't, didn't ask uh, didn't give any hint about what was to be released a few days after. And I remember that on that occasion, he was still looking so young, as Thomas was saying, and I couldn't imagine that he was ill, severely ill. So I was reading the other day that Mrs. Merkel, being asked about Mr. Macron, replied by a quotation of Hermann Hesse. And the, 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 the quotation says more or, less, more or less, at the beginning of everything, there is charm. And Mrs. Merkel added, but charm may fade away if there are no results. In the case of Pierre, obviously, there was charm and there were results. So I have a lot of respect and admiration for his memory. Thank you. As uh, Mary Kay told you this morning, uh, Pierre was a man who has contributed to many areas in physics. I have preferred a similar topic, but I just count the different areas. So when I came to Annecy in 1905, uh, 1985, yes, uh, Pierre was a was already a recognized physicist and he, uh, he had written many papers. In 1980 he had uh, given his PhD thesis and before he had three papers with Georges Giardy. Among them one paper wa who was quoted lab TH02 was the second paper of, uh, of lab. This was uh, one topic. The next topic was a paper with Mary Kay and Kunst. The second topic. Then after the thesis, he worked with Thomas Schücker, or during the thesis, but the papers were published after the thesis. This was topic number three. Uh, then there were papers with Chata and CKV. This was topic number four. In 1983, he published a paper with uh, 
Salba and Ramos Dora on our XI gauges and supersymmetric theories. This was topic number five. In 84, you will hear from Salati. He was working on uh, particle physics in combination with cosmology. This was number six. And not to forget the papers with Marie Kay. So he was already at 30 years working in seven different areas of physics. At that time, uh, when I was in Annecy, and it's true was what Pierre said to, uh, this morning, uh, Annecy is a nice place, but not only for the geographical situation, but also for the, for the atmosphere in the, in the group, which uh, made that I had my happiest year of my career uh, passed in Annecy. So at that time we were thinking about uh, supergravity and metacoupling. Uh, we, that means uh, Pierre Pinetri, Georges Yardy, Martin Müller and myself, uh, and we were not able to give a, a, a simple meaning of this uh, structure of Kähler transformations uh, coupled to supergravity. <coughs> And one day, we had the idea, you okay, one day we had the idea just to generalize uh, the usual Fate of Fa Faye Iliopoulos term, coupled to supergravity. So what do you have to do? Uh, Kähler structure means uh, that one has a chiral U1, which is not uh, in, in the flat super flat space, but in curved superspace, you, this is there. And you need a supergravity. So this structure is, was very well known already in, uh, in these days. This was realized in U1 superspace. You have the usual superspace, so the supergravity, curvature scalar, or the Schwinger field, auxiliary fields, and on top of this, you have a U1 term with a gauge Eno, gauge field, and a D term. And you have just to, to work this out. And this was the solution. So I thought it may, might be uh, too, uh, too trivial to be published, but uh, well, we, we published it uh, nevertheless. Uh, and I will come back to this, uh, to this uh, subject uh, later on at the end of my, of my talk. So when we had this solution, I went to Germany, I met a colleague and friend. He told me, yes, it's very nice, but you should, it would be nice if you could do the superfield rescaling as uh, people had done in, uh, in component fields. So we try to to do this, and uh, I will uh, tell you about the story of this uh, construction. This is not very difficult, and uh, it can be done in 15-20 uh, minutes. So it's uh, the, the talk is given by George Gerardi and myself, but George couldn't come uh, today because he had a little problem with his eyes and operation, so he, he should uh, re stay at rest. Uh, so I'm going to, to give the talk. <coughs> so these were the people who were working in the, on the subject. The original papers were the first two papers, together with Martin Müller. Martin Müller has left physics in 1907 to join uh, SAP, the German enterprise uh, was, who is uh, in uh, software, used in, uh, in uh, industrial enterprises. This was in 1987. And we wrote the physics reports in uh, 2001. <laughs> now, what I'm going to tell you right now, you will see many formulas on the, on the pages. But don't be afraid, the formulas are more or less to, 
to illustrate what is important is that you catch the idea. Okay? The rest, uh, this would be okay. So the first uh, subject which comes in is uh, the Vierbein or Tetrad formulation of gravity. We have a Vierbein field. a Lorentz connection, and out of this you can form torsion, curvature. You have general coordinate, coordinate transformations, Lorentz transformations, and the Vierbein transforms in, in this way. To give, uh, if, you re if one redefines the transformations, uh, this can be written in a more covariant way, and one has Bianchi identities. And the Einstein-Hilbert action is just the uh, action of the uh, scalar curvature. Now, how does supersymmetry come in there? Well, I should uh, say also that there are many, many uh, formulations of super, super gravity due to different people, and maybe uh, there are as many formulations of super gravity as people have done research in super gravity. I will use uh, the formulation of Wesen Sumino. What did they do? They generalized the fear pine and the, the spin connection in, uh, in the most uh, general way. So the, the fear pine becomes a super object, uh, where the indices A are now contain spinner indices, supersymmetry, there should, there should be spinner indices. The argument X becomes a Z. <coughs> this is a sign of superspace. And the world indices are M. So this object contains the usual fear bind. If you take M <coughs> equals the Latin index, A Latin index, and Z X. It contains a rather Schwinger field for ob obvious identifications. And the Lorentz connection has a vectorial part and the spinorial part, the same, the same connection in the spinorial notation is this one. Now supersymmetry is a little bit more complicated. So you can define nevertheless a torsion, a curvature in this space, you have general, no, general coordinate transformations and Lorentz transformations which act on EA <coughs> and this uh, now the, the, the transformations. The supergravity multiplet is described by EMA, by the Sarita Schwinger field and by auxiliary fields. So that's all. And this is well understood, so you can believe me, we can work with it, and I can tell you some ideas. So you, you, may, you may see that this is a quite a larger structure, which contains many, many degrees of freedom. So, what one does is one imposes constraint equations on the torsion. These are algebraic covariant constraints, and I have given them here a first group. This will become clear in a minute why I call it the first group, a second one, and the third one. And now we shall consider transformations on top of the general coordinate and the Lorentz transformation in superspace, namely transformations which uh, will generalize the Weilerie scalings of the matrix or the Vierbein to supersymmetric theories. These are called Vierbein and connection transformations. And uh, don't be afraid of the formula. They are parameterized by XAA, 
These are transformations to specify. They are, they are parameterized by transformations of the speed con connection in superspace, high MBA. And these transformations <coughs> change the torsion, the torsion two-form component into a T prime <coughs> together with, uh, with these uh, variations. Okay? So first point was uh, vierbein formalism in ordinary gravity. Second point was uh, formulation to supergravity. And the third point is uh, generalization of uh, um, value scalings to superspace geometry. And now we shall do it. This is why I call the uh, constraints uh, first group, because the first group don't mind what the indices are and so on and so forth, just recall that there's one group which contains only the X transformations, the so XBA of the field line. So these transformations take a restricted form here with XBA given by these expressions. So the message is that the first First group of constraints reduces the X transformation to this form. Okay? Nothing deep. Then the second uh, type of constraints uh, determines the uh, objects chi, chi BA, the spinorial components and the vector components by these expressions, in terms of the superfield x and x bar. This you can do. And this was done in the first place by uh, Howe and Tucker, 40 years ago from now on. And now comes the, 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 third, uh, the third group of constraints. And there, one remarks uh, that the torsion components of the third group of constraints, which are were equal to zero, are not equal to zero under these transformations. <coughs> okay? There's nothing so similar. And now we have two options. The first option is to... So The new, the new torsion is, is defined in terms of omega gamma and omega gamma dot. And I will come back to this special form later on in option two. So option one was how in Tucker omega and omega dot equals zero. This gives uh, a chirality constraints And this means uh, that uh, one can use uh, the notion of uh, conformal supergravity in this kind of superspace. This was the merit of Howe and Tucker who did it. Now, I will not uh, continue with uh, option one, but I will try to do option two. Because what one has learned in, in, uh, in supergravity coupling to matter was that in the calculations, in the previous calculations, one had to, to work out the component field expression and then on the component field expression do the value scalings because the kinetic term of the, the Einstein-Hilbert term had not the, the right uh, normalization. And this was very complicated. So this is where we come to the objection of my German colleague and friend. Option two will be, we change the structure group. We shall use a new, uh, new structure group, which is the following. If you, if you look at these uh, structures, they appear with the signs 
exactly in the same way as a connection for a Kyler U1 would appear in this construction. Okay? You believe me. So, what we are doing is we say we can take the, the new torsion equal to zero if we change the structure group. So this we add a, a chiral U1 to the superspace structure group. You, you see where I'm going to, to arrive. So U1 was a, a, a structure for Kähler transformations. So option two is uh, to, to, to go from this torsion here to a new one which, which contains the fields A, which have transformation laws. Then the torsion constraints of first, second, and third group are, are zero. This, this means that we are in... Oh, okay. <laughs> This means uh, that we are in, uh, in U1 superspace and the component field multiplet is now the previous component field multiplet EMA psi M alpha, so right, the Schwinger field plus uh, the auxiliary fields together with a multiplet for the U1 transformations. So we continue with this action and we find, for instance, in, in one of the relevant equation for the, trans, for the construction of the supersymmetric action is the following. This, is a, this superfield R contains a curvature scalar and sorry, the auxiliary fields and this is a D-term. So the D-term Arise, arises in a very natural way in this construction. And the rest is now simply to turn the crank, what uh, Wes and Sumino have uh, done for us to, to work out the, the action. And we did it. Yeah. And uh, the complete action for the general super, super, super gravity and matter coupling action is given by these terms. Now here I will explain a little bit. There is a curvature scalar. This is a radiator Schwinger term for the, for the action. This is a scalar field. This is a, a supersymmetric partner of the scalar field. This is a young Mills field. This is a synthetic term for the, for the young Mills field. And these are interaction terms. But this is not all here. It continues. You have interaction terms until the, la the last line. These are the auxiliary fields. And this is the answer to the, the whole question. So this is what I wanted to, to tell you in, in some simple words. Everything I have not told is just uh, is, is using methods which are well uh, established. And uh, now I, I would like to to finish my talk uh, with this nice page of handwriting of Pierre uh, where he was working on, uh, he made some remarks on anomalous scalar transformations and so on, with hindsight to, uh, to the effects in Gageno condensations. So let me say what this uh, general team has come, comes back uh, from, with respect to Pierre Binetri, uh, 
very often. <coughs> he was an outstanding scientist and a gifted teacher. I was very impressed by his ability and capacity to communicate his scientific knowledge and competence, competence with, <laughs> with non-experts. In real life, he was a person of great culture, as music, literature, painting, but also society and politics. After a hard-working day, we often went to small restaurants too, where the conversation was not at all a continuation of, it, of what we did during the, day, during, during the daytime. We spent many hours discussing all kinds of things, not without jokes and amusement. Life was too short. That's all. Maybe, maybe you can uh, tell us uh, how... Uh, I remember you also worked with Pierre, for example, in generalizations of this adding linear multiplets or a three four multiplet. Can you tell us something about the the three four multiplet generalization of this? You know that the, the, that the three four multiplet is a multiplet which con contains a gauge field which is itself a three form, a three anti-symmetric indices. But it's also a chiral multiplet. So it's a chiral multiplet with an additional constraint what was uh, used in my case this morning for Gagino condensates. Because if you, if you take uh, the superfield of the, gate, of the gate geno, lambda alpha, lambda alpha, this is a scalar. Since lambda alpha is chiral, this is a chiral scalar. But uh, in the super young mill theory, the gate geno superfields satisfy a, a, an additional constraint. d alpha lambda alpha plus d alpha dot lambda dot alpha dot is equal to zero. And uh, this constraint is also reproduced by an additional constraint for the three-form multiplet, which relates the opposite combination of d squared phi minus d squared phi bar to be the divergence of the anti-symmetric tensor. This is quite a deeper, a deeper subject. Uh, the three sub form multiplet, because it's also on the, on the base of the description of anomalies in supersymmetric theories. Well, uh, the linear multiplet is a multiplet which has a two form gauge field, like the AM, but two indices. But I think it's a little bit too, uh, too special. To, Okay, if not, I, think, I suggest that we thank again the speaker. Okay, of course, uh, Pierre and supersymmetry is a very wide subject. Yeah, He made many contributions to many fields, and I will not make an attempt to, uh, to list all uh, or to give details of all his uh, contributions. Uh, let me... Uh, start at the beginning. It was in the early 80s that it was uh, recognized that uh, supersymmetry is not only a nice, beautiful theory, but could solve problems of the standard model. And uh, Pierre was in ANSI at that time, and he published his first paper on supersymmetry, as far as I've seen, with uh, uh, theorists from uh, ANSI on a uh, quite a formal subject, how to uh, fix uh, the R gauge, uh, the gauge uh, in a supersymmetric uh, co covariant way. But uh, he didn't stop with these uh, formal subjects. He had a very broad view of physics, and uh, Pierre was soon aware of uh, the diverse, uh, important, both formal and phenomenological aspects of this possible extension of the standard model. So he, uh, uh, and that's the theme I want to uh, underline in the following. So he started to move, was in, uh, in the States, Berkeley and Santa Barbara, and uh, 
collaborated with uh, Mary Kay, of course, and uh, many others there on civil symmetry. Uh, visited Florida and Chicago and uh, went back to ANSI where he, he got his first uh, permanent uh, position and uh, collaborated with Richard Girardo. And uh, yeah, later with, with many more on many different aspects of supersymmetry. And this is the important slide. Yeah? All of these items are related to supersymmetry, have been discussed by Pierre in the context of supersymmetry. And you see the, uh, the enormous uh, width and, uh, of uh, different subjects. Yeah? You have seen formal aspects, but then there is cosmology, inflation, quintessence, superstring models. There's no particular order here because he'd, he did all of that at the same time uh, and uh, one after the other. How to break supersymmetry. One supersymmetry is breaking, broken. How uh, to uh, handle radiative corrections. He, he had a paper with Carlos Savoy on, uh, on this particular model. Um, and uh, he, of course, emphasized uh, the um, possible experimental signatures. Uh, you have already heard the notion of gauge condensates, one of the, the possibilities to break uh, supersymmetry sp spontaneously, but he got also interested in flavor physics in the context of supersymmetry and supergravity, as you have heard before. So, um, in 1990, he came as a professor to Orsay, as it was already indicated by, by Dominic, and he continued uh, to work on supersymmetry with an enormous number of um, collaborators which reflect the, uh, the different themes and subjects. He had students, uh, which you have seen here. He continued previous collaborations with uh, Mary Kay and Girardi and Richard. Uh, of course, he was inspiring to many people. I came across uh, two papers where he was actually the, the only author. The, these uh, indicate already the uh, widespread of his uh, interest, uh, of a formal one uh, uh, based on uh, possible uh, stringy realizations of a realistic extension of the standard model. And uh, cosmology, yeah, quintessence, is a, a model for an evolution of a, a cosmological constant, and he uh, treated that problem in the context of supersymmetry breaking and, and had an important paper as the only author on that subject. Now, um, yeah, I should mention that in uh, 1994 he had, he had asked me uh, whether I wouldn't like to apply for a professorship in Orsay, and uh, I did, and uh, liked it, and never regretted it. But uh, subsequently, we collaborated actually on a quite a different subject on uh, cosmology in five dimensions. Now, uh, given his uh, broad view of physics, including the uh, phenomenological aspects of uh, supersymmetry, he, he started this uh, GDR supersymmetry whose aim was uh, uh, to have meetings between experimentalists and theorists on the uh, possible phenomenological aspects of supersymmetry. This became uh, an international issue, although GDR is uh, obviously French, Groupement de Recherche. It uh, uh, invited researchers from outside France, from uh, Brittany, Germany and the meetings were take, took place uh, outside France and uh, it never uh, finished. Yeah? Uh, it was just uh, generalized to a, a GDR a Terra scale including more um, possible subjects than searches for supersymmetry at uh, colliders and elsewhere. So Pierre had a a very important impact on the development of supersymmetry in France, which uh, showed also outside France. Now, as you have already heard, he was a gifted teacher and lecturer. 
and uh, he loved to share his insight with students, postdocs, and colleagues. And on supersymmetry, he had published this uh, nice book, uh, which was, of course, uh, very positively reviewed. And uh, one remark was uh, that uh, Binaturi provides an excellent bullet point summary of the problems that supersymmetry could solve. And uh, he gave many inspiring lectures on supersymmetry at summer schools, university classes, and inspired many people this way. And he asked uh, important questions. Yeah. Uh, that's the only paper I want to cite a little bit. Uh, with uh, colleagues in the US, he published this paper, 25 <coughs> Questions for String Theory. In the abstract, it says each topic culminates in a set of questions that we believe are amenable to direct considerations by string theorists and whose answers we think could help to connect string theory and phenomenology. I will actually flash these questions because they show again the broad view of Pierre of all aspects of uh, particle physics. So it starts with questions on gauge symmetries and unifications. How uh, could uh, string theory um, uh, achieve uh, this goal under which uh, conditions? Uh, some more specific questions on the role of the various U1 symmetries in the context of, of uh, uh, grand unification. and. Um, are there singlets, uh, can uh, matter, singlet-like matter coupled, uh, or can singlets couple to, to matter? He was interested in neutrinos and leptons or lepton number. Here the, uh, the funny feature of uh, uh, supersymmetric extension of the standard model is that you have a superfield in the Higgs sector which has the same quantum numbers as a superfield in the lepton sector. So uh, how, how can this be uh, distinguished in the context of string theory? And uh, also the question of right-handed neu neutrinos um, in the context of string th uh, theory. What about proton decay? Is, in string theory, you may have additional interactions for proton decay beyond uh, granification. Uh, what about R parity? Is it exact or uh, approximate? And um, yeah, uh, since it helps to keep a, a particle stable, what are the uh, conditions in string theory to keep particle stable? Then about asked about the question of the, the origin of the three generations in the standard model uh, called flavor. Are there symmetries? Um, can these symmetries be embedded into string theory? And uh, um, yeah, can there be non-abelian horizontal symmetries in the space of flavor? Uh, it continues until uh, the question about the complex phases, which uh, will uh, later lead to CP violation. Uh, hidden sectors in st string theory, uh, which are usually needed to break uh, supersymmetry spontaneously. The gauge genome masses, the origin of the mu parameter of the MSSM uh, in string theory. Why should it be of the order of the supersymmetry breaking scale or the gravitino mass? Uh, again, back to neut neutrinos. Um, why, um, uh, why, what are the possible origins of their masses? And finally, does it even make sense to ask uh, for two string theories to explain essentially everything? Yeah? Fermion masses, meaning the flavor problem, the nature of dark matter, being consistent with collider experiment and cosmology. So I showed this only to uh, recall the broad view of Pierre on all different aspects of 
particle physics and beyond, in, including cos cosmology. And I'm only talking about supersymmetry. You'll hear more in uh, the other presentations. So um, whenever one had the, the occasion to discuss physics with Pierre, he was always friendly, ready to uh, answer questions and to discuss, and had a very broad, extraordinary knowledge. And this, it is this broad view of physics that will remain and will remain inspiring to us. Thank you. Well, it's a sad occasion to talk about uh, Pierre. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it is very interesting to learn a lot about him because he was a very private person. And uh, what one learns uh, only strengthens one's uh, understanding of his humanity and, c and civilized behavior, which is very nice. I will tell you a little bit. I'm, I'm sorry my talk is going to contain some physics. And, uh, but I hope the equations will be a bit bigger, but I'm not so sure. Um, so, uh, textures then and now. So, uh, I will tell you a little bit my, ex my first meeting with Pierre, although I'd known him before, but my first collaborative meeting with him. Okay, so, all right, good, that's the beginning of, of something that doesn't work. Ah, yes. Well, anyway, I'm going to read it to you. That way you will be able to see. So, um, on May 4th, today is May 3rd, um, May 4th, a uh, um, paper was published uh, with uh, two Pierres, uh, Binetrui and Ramon, on Yukawa textures and anomalies. And uh, the, the story behind this is that um, people talk about the Green-Schwartz mechanism a little bit earlier. And... Um, we were, um, Luis Ibanez had made a, a remark um, about a year or two before about the applicability of it to understanding neutrino and, well, not neutrinos, but any kind of mass patterns in the standard model. And um, so uh, Pierre and I met um, over, I would say, liquid textures and other things at the 1994 Morion Conference, which was held at Meribel Les Alus. And... Um, I survived because I did not get injured while skiing. Um, but the more, in, more important thing is that Pierre and I started talking a little bit. We had converging points of view. And um, this is when our collaboration began. And um, so we both, um, uh, we had a certain urge. I mean, we were both very interested. We, we had both uh, like uh, what I would like to call uh, formal theory, but at the same time we wanted to explain something with it. And uh, the neutrino mass patterns was, was some sort of, a, of an important thing, which to this day actually remains unanswered. So uh, we basically um, started working on this. And uh, for the next four years, we published a certain number of papers. I think it said four more papers followed with members of the Binetrui clan or the tribu Binetrui, Stéphane Lavignac, Emilien Dudas, Cédric Defayet, et un Bulgare, Sergei Petkov. He wasn't part of the, of the tribe, but he was there. Um, so this was done, interestingly enough, before the discovery of neutrino oscillations, although everybody was talking about them, had been talking about it, and... Uh, and that is uh, really, to this day, um, I mean, the second indication of physics beyond the standard model. So it's an important uh, thing. And, and so we, we, we could, this is our uh, collaboration uh, started. And um, at that time, uh, my uh, grandmother was still alive in, in Paris. And I used to go and, and visit her. And Pierre was at Orsay. And um, we started uh, collaborating. And uh, we went back and forth. And, between Orsay and Paris, we, we ate at uh, rather nice places. I even taught Pierre some corners of Paris which he did not know, much to my delight. <laughs> um, and uh, it, was, um, it was a great, great experience. I mean, we were doing physics because we were both interested in doing physics, and then we were both interested in eating or walking or something, and, and it was natural. It was a natural collaboration, and it was a very happy time for me. 
Uh, at that time, Pierre was losing his father, and um, I, d I knew a little bit about it, uh, not very much, and I knew he was very much affected, uh, and um, there was a certain loneliness about him, uh, which um, he, he seemed to, uh, uh, well, uh, he fought it by being somewhat extremely focused on physics and, ev and everything else. My last slide, you will see one of his favorite sayings, to me at least, was, je suis débordé. I am overwhelmed. And this he said every time I met him, just as a preamble, so that you would not dare to ask too many things of him. But that was the, the one thing. So, okay. So now let me see. Now, there's somewhere I'm supposed to do this. Ah, okay. Now, so the question is, what can we say today about textures that was not said at the time? Um, and, uh, in sp well, in the meantime, neutrino oscillations were discovered, and you might think that a wealth of new data would, would tell us exactly what was behind these, these very weird things. And at the end of the day, we, didn't, we did not learn very much. But I have now 25 minutes to tell you, and so I will tell you in some detail in the following way. One, I will review for you some of the mixing masses and and grand unified theories. And then I would uh, present a bottom-up asymmetric uh, tri by maximal texture, which actually has a very interesting thing that it actually leads a prediction for the CP violating angle, which is quite unusual in this business. And so that's what I will be talking about. This is the prediction, except we don't know the sign yet, but anyway. So let me tell you a little bit about textures, which is after all, this world in supersymmetry is a somewhat forgotten topic, but it is a whole set of numbers that we really would dearly like to understand the origin of. And um, okay, so let me see. I'm so sorry. I apologize for you for this. I did not realize that I should have taken a different font. Okay, so this doesn't really matter. So let me tell t t tell you some of the, the things here that are ra rather interesting. So. We, the Aryukawa matrix is in a standard model. There's no, no way for you to read this. Okay, so anyhow, these are the standard things about what we know about flavors, right? I mean, one, we have these, these matrices we would really like to understand. Uh, we have lots and lots of data. Um, and we have formalized all of these things. We have, a, we have a mixing in, um, among the quarks and the... Uh, the, the characteristic of it is that the largest angle is the Cabibo angle, which is about 13 degrees, and everything else, all the other mixings are very weak. Uh, there are a bunch of masses. At the grand unification, uh, there are some very interesting things which occur, and I will tell you what they are. I mean, one of them is that at grand, there's this very peculiar fact that at grand unification, the mass of the bottom and the mass of the tau is more, are not very different from one another. This is a very bizarre thing because one, they, they gain equality one by the renormalization effects of the, of the standard model. There are also some, something called, which is called the Georgi Yaskog uh, type re relations, which uh, basically, well, there's this thing that the mass of electron and mu is not very different than the product of mass of those, although this is kind of a dirty work because the renormalization group is there. And in a certain sense, the determinant, there are some equalities between determinants. So what is, what is bizarre about this whole system is that there are things that look like relations, and maybe the most important of these relations is a relation that was found a long, long time ago by Gatto and his collaborators, which is the fact that the mass ratio of MD over MS, which is really defined, well, interpreted, but from current algebra to, to be something quite trustworthy is numerically very close to the tangent of the Cabibo angle, which means that there is a relationship between eigenvalues of these matrices and mixing angles. And that is where the, no, the number of the name textures comes from because that, that implies some large inequalities among some of the matrix elements, that some of the matrix elements are much smaller. And we don't know why, but this, this thing has been going on for a long time. This is very well known, and this is some sort of a complicated stuff. Okay, good. All right, wow. Now, I grew up in a, <coughs> in a generation, well, a little bit before, but uh, uh, the, uh, 
the question where, where grain unification was, once grain unification gets into your brain, it's a bit like supersymmetry, it's kind of hard to forget. And, uh, and this is one of the legacies of the standard model. We do have grain unification. And whether it's realized in nature or not is a different matter. But, um, I mean, if the, if the Weinberg angle had been quite different, nobody would be talking about grain unification. But it does lend itself to this interpretation. And the quantum numbers of where the particles belong um, also lend themselves. But what it means is that the, um, a bunch of particles uh, of each uh, families are of, of, of each generation of families are coupled in terms of representations, and um, this was uh, this is kind of, kind of amazing. And that, for example, at the level of SU five, you have a, a bunch of of Yukawa matrices, uh, which are uh, which are along some of the representations, and it means also at the level of SU five that naively that the the charge minus one third particles in them and the charge minus one particles have some relations which are we give in, uh, in SU5 and that relation is exemplified by a very nice remark of Georgie and Yaskog which is also very old okay where basically you reproduce in a relative simply in a relatively simple way this the mass ratio that MD over MS and, and ME over MU and MB over M tau in terms of a very simple texture, which is actually, it's a result. And again, again, it's one of those results that's hard to forget. It's, um, it's very simple. Now you go to the next, uh, not, uh, I mean, scale, although SO10 was, was the first one, uh, first of the grand unified group to be, to be um, posited in a certain sense, uh, life becomes a bit more complicated, but in a sense more beautiful as we get closer and closer to perhaps the primeval scale of the, of the Big Bang, we hope, where basically now each family belongs to a spinner representation and each family contains these right-handed neutrinos. And then you have only three Yukawa matrices, blah, 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 okay? And, uh, but then you have a mass of these right-handed neutrinos, a three by three matrix M, um, which is uh, a new ingredient which enables us to do a little bit more with everything, okay? And uh, we have, therefore, what, what physicists had to learn, of course, is the difference of uh, masses, that there are such things as neutrino uh, Dirac masses, but also there are some Majorana masses. And uh, up to that point, uh, people did not make a, 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 a distinction, but it does, and of course the, Maj the Majorana mass violates total lepton number, which is one of the things that everybody would love to know whether it's there. Now, this is a very quick thing about where the masses lie in grand unified theories, so you have all kinds of masses in, in there, oops, okay, and they lie in different, uh, in different products, and, and this is the 10 of SO10, this is the 126. These are all forms. By the way, if I want to impress my, my string theorist uh, friends, I just said that the, the mass matrices are just forms. Oh, they say, oh yes, because forms is very important. Yeah, but, um, but anyway, these are, these are the ones, and, uh, and, and so that's it. All right, now, the, the so-called CISO mechanism, a term that was, invented by Roberto Pecce, I think. Um, the, uh, because I, I, I know Yanagida did not invent it because I cannot think of a Japanese physicist who has not left Japan being able to invent uh, the word CISO, but we never know. But it turns out Roberto was visiting at the time. And um, this is how the name came out. Anyway, so there it is. And, uh, and, uh, and what happens is that the lepton mixing matrix uh, so there's a diagonalization of this matrix, the, the, which is done by this unitary transformation. It's a Majorana thing, okay? And um, this is all well known, all right? And uh, what happened, and this is the, what will be important for later on, is that the PMNS matrix, which is the CKM matrix for leptons, this Ponte Corvo, Maki Nakagawa, Sakata, 
And uh, there it is, but it is an overlap, just like the CKM matrix is an overlap between charge two thirds and charge minus one third. This is an overlap between the, unit, the matrix for the charge leptons and the CISO matrix. Okay? So, so therefore, the experimental uh, values of things here will be presumably some here and some there, and we don't quite know where. And that is something that theorists like to do. So, so for example, even if you have something beautiful for the CISO stuff, uh, you will have some sort of a Kabibo like haze. Why Kabibo? Because according to SU5, the U minus 1 is related to the minus 1 third mass. So it's all part of the same stuff. So therefore, the, the idea is that the experimental values of the, of the CKM, uh, of the PMNS matrices, would be, should be viewed according to this as in terms of a CISO time value plus some corrections of, of, of order Kabibo. That's what the grand unification tells you. Okay? So, hazy CISO, but it's hazy, the hazy is a California uh, expression that, which calls hazy sunshine. When you have hazy sunshine in California, that means you have an enormous pollution in the, in the atmosphere. But anyway, okay, so now the, the, the neutrino data, I will not bore you with that, but there is some, I will, yes, I'll bore you a little bit. There is a, the, the, the interesting thing here is that now, now we know the angles, I mean, after kind of heroic measurements. Well, these, these are kind of latest PDG values, but the fact is that the, this is the so-called atmospheric, this is the solar, and this is the, 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 the reactor, and what happens is that these two are relatively large, and this, this, this makes you think of Kabibo or something, but, but these guys not. So these guys make you uh, think of uh, something new is happening, which, is, which doesn't mean by any means there's a CISO, but it does mean that it is consistent with the idea that things are going to be different. Uh, now, the, there is a bounding cosmology, which is total en in terms of the total energy that neutrinos uh, 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 bring, and then when you, you can fold it with a, with a microwave background and get a better value, but right now it's about at that level. We don't know, uh, we, we don't know what else there is. Okay, we don't know much more. Okay, so now let me... So my, my feeling has been for a long time that the large mixing angles tell you that there's some sort of crystal-like symmetry. And in fact, the crystal-like symmetry in, in particle in, in, uh, comes from the fact that you have some discrete symmetry, symmetries around. Okay? And the discrete symmetries in the flavor uh, uh, game was not used for, for, for a long time, although there was a pioneering way by Sugawara and Pagvasa many, many years ago we, who made the possibility that perhaps if there's a family symmetry, maybe it will be a finite symmetry, just like a crystal-like. Okay, and that was the idea here. Now, so I think that from, but it is presumably because of the suppression in the CISO mechanism, we're dealing close to the Planck scale. Maybe, how close, I don't know, logarithmically close to the Planck scale. And uh, in Dirac's word, that, that means that this, this matrix M should be too beautiful to ignore because since we're very close to the primordial, primordial scale, probably it should be kind of, uh, there, there, should be some, there should be something very nice about it, even though we don't know. And, and, the, and the, the neutrinos provide a window how to, to tell that. So, okay? So, of course, one of the things, um, because this is a, an occupational disease of some physicists, whenever there, there's any pattern, they, they add a symmetry to it, which may not be true. I mean, I remind you that, for example, in grand unified theories, which tell, tells you about grand unification, all you really know is that the anomalies are canceled, and the, but the anomalies, uh, the canceling of the anomalies, uh, may not necessarily imply groups. However, groups love to some groups love to cancel anomalies, so we don't know. But nevertheless, those are things. So now let me, let me. Uh, so the, the so the question is that there is a group which is one of my favorite, um, because we all have favorite groups. Um, we also too beautiful to ignore, and I don't, that's not the subject of the talk. But what I would like to say in the, in the work of this, the experimentalist Perkins, I mean, uh, with the, with two other, two other person say, well, you know, you go look at the solar angle and you look at the, the atmospheric angle, there's a nice three by three matrix that looks like it could really, you know, roughly speaking, give you something, except one of the angles is zero, 
the, the, the <laughs> reactor angle, and before it was, it was measured, that was not a big problem. And, and the, the other one, well, you got 45 degrees, and then you got about 32, 33 degrees from, from the solar one, and that, that, is, not truth, and that is not far from, from the truth. So let me not go on this stuff that becomes too technical. Okay, so now let me give you a beautiful view of things. And now it's too big. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so, so what we have in, from the theory standpoint, we have what I call the flavor group. Okay, we have basically uh, through granulation. So let, let, let me go through this because it's a beautiful thing. Uh, so with, uh, with uh, SU5, well, with, 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 with physics, the, what's the mixing of down and up, I mean, the relationship is through CKM. Now, the, through SO10, the right-handed neutrino Dirac uh, mixing is related to the up. In other words, I'm, I'm giving you, diagrammatically speaking, things that appear in, those, uh, in, those, uh, uh, um, in, in that table. The down and the E through SU5, the E and the neutrino through, through the PMNS, and finally, they are all come together here through this thing, this, this uh, unknown Majorana, so this is a funny seesaw. This is a broken up seesaw. It's, the seesaw should be like that. This is a, the both one. But this, this was for the purposes of the diagram. So what happens is that perhaps you have a way of, of unifying, and you might think that with all this, this way of doing things, you would still know the answer. So I want to present very quickly something, okay? Looking for the perfect texture, okay? And uh, this is a texture we, we invented very recently. To our, and to our surprise, it works, and I just wanted to get you to, uh, okay, it's the first time I've talked about it. So, no small angle. So, the question is that uh, one assumption we make is, well, we may make two, two basic assumptions. No small angle in the electroweak singlet physics, um, namely that it's a crystal of some core, some sort, some discrete angle. There are large angles, two of the large angles in there, okay? And then that means that naively the, the reactor angle from the CISO is zero, okay? And the, the diagonalizing matrix is this tried by maximum. That means that the explanation of the experimental value for the theta 1, 3 must come purely from the, the charge lepton matrix. Let's see how far that, that goes, okay? And that turns out to be quite amazing. So let me give you a strategy. So the strategy for, for looking, those are the matrices, but the strategy is very simple. You have, uh, f at the level of SU5, you have two types of mixing. You have the 45 mixing that Georgie and Yaskog used, and then you have the 5 mixing, which is uh, uh, some complicated thing, but the Georgie Yaskog value was that the 45 mixing only occurred here, and that there's a famous factor of three Klebsch Gordon coefficient. So let me, let me look at the Georgie Yaskog texture quickly. The Georgie Yaskog texture tells you, if you, if you do it at ISU5, that these matrices are, so this is the matrix for the 45, and this is the matrix for the 5, but it is symmetric, it's a symmetric matrix. That is their assumption, and that is the assumption everybody uses. Now, so, you, so for example, y minus one-third is like that, and y minus one is, <coughs> see there's a minus three here because that's the klebsch gordon coefficient for the 45, and, uh, and this, this looks like the same because it, the five version is, is symmetric, okay? And then in terms of the Wolfenstein problem, so uh, this coefficient, blah, blah, all this, lambda is the, a la Wolfenstein, so it's the Kabibo angle, okay? And then you, you find something very nice that actually, oh, oh, what am I doing? Recherche spotlight, je veux pas rechercher spotlight, okay. Okay, what happens, something very, very nice, and this is what people have done, is that the, uh, this kind of stuff explains beautiful things as before, Okay, u minus 1 is u dagger of CKM, except you replace C by minus 3C. And the PMNS is this again. And if you put the, the try by maximal mixing and you, co you compute sine theta 1, 3, you find that this is three times smaller. And as long as the, 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 the Diabe and, and Reno 
had not done their work, everybody was happy with this. And this was some sort of a fixed point, theory, theory fixed point. But basically, it turns out that the, the diameter angle is about three times that. And that's a problem from, for, the, for this relatively. Okay? So that's what it got. So therefore, 